workshops. I've been engaged in several workshops uh, as a company where we have been addressing issues concerning this SME industry, but mainly I've been working under uh, a civil organization that is Siatini, uh, where we've been involved in several national discussions as part of the national reference group that discussed issues to do with how we can improve on the activities and growth of the SME industry. And those are one of the reasons as to why I am here with you today. And I believe that whatever we are going to discuss today, everyone who is privileged to be here will benefit from this discussion. And if implemented, will make a difference in their businesses to stay abreast with the, the technological advancements that are taking place in the world today. And uh, talking about Um, hello? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, we have lost Dorothy for a minute. Uh, Okay, I think she's having a bit of internet issues. Uh, hello, Dorothy. Sorry, were you hearing me? Uh, uh, Dorothy, we can't hear you. Please unmute. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me now? Uh, now we can hear you. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, what I was saying that uh, I had introduced myself once again, and I had said that I am the managing director of DM Group International Limited. DM Group has been uh, in existence since 2012. We do process products like Kim's natural chili sauce, Kim's tomato ketchup, and Kim's uh, crackers, and uh, we supply it in supermarkets nationally, majorly in the central region and in the eastern region. And uh, as an agro-processor, I've been engaged in several activities that surround the agro-processing industry, majorly focusing on how we can improve the operations, the growth, and the sustainability of this industry. I have been working in partnership with Siatini Uganda to address some of these issues on a national level, on a regional level, and an international level. I've been able to reach the WTO still addressing the SME industry. And I believe that we have achieved milestones in this journey that we have taken. And whatever I am going to discuss today is uh, a topic that I believe is uh, an interest of most industry SME enterprises. And once this is embraced, I'm very positive that the industry will move a step ahead in the growth and sustainability that we all yearn for. And I want to, re to request to give me sharing rights such that I can share the presentation. Thank you. Are you able to share now? No, it still says disabled. Okay, try again. I think you're logged into, into you're logged I'm in log twice. I'm logged in twice, but the one that uh, is not indicating that I'm speaking is mm -hmm. the one that you should uh, give the rights. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you very much.
So what we are going to talk about today is how do we build a simple management information system? Uh, but before we get to how to build a system, the question should be, do we know what exactly a management information system is? Because you can only build something that you know. You must first have an understanding of it, why you need it, then you can know how you can build it as a, an entrepreneur, as an organization, or as an individual. So before I get to how we can build this system, what is important for us is to know that what exactly is this system. And uh, from uh, already the, the opening uh, slide, you can see that there are so many gadgets that uh, are being shown and there are people using the gadgets. So this is a system, this is a, talk, a technology system. This is a system that is working in the digital era. You cannot use this system without a computer. You cannot use this system without a laptop. You cannot use this system without a phone. So for any business person to use this system, those are the three gadgets that you must be able to have on you every day of your business life. And in additionally, we must be able to have internet. This system works on internet if you want to monitor it out of office, because there are two ways you can address this system. There is in office and out of office. So to be able to have this system, you must know what do I want? Do I want to monitor my operations even when I've traveled and I'm not in uh, my office? Do I want to monitor it when I'm at home? Or do I only want to monitor it when I am in my office? So that determines what kind of internet connectivity that you would require for this business of yours. Uh, just a minute here. So when we get to the man understanding this management information system. We must also know that this may be a technology system, but it is a relational system. This is Dorothy, a system could enable. Could you put your presentation in, in, present, in slideshow mode so it covers yes, the entire screen? Okay, just a minute. Set up slide show, that is it. Click on from current slide. From big from current slide, yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. So from, uh, from this, we need to understand that this system here is a relational system. It is an interactive system. It is not a standalone system. Why? Because it marries all the units within an organization. It marries all the departments. You will find that if you're in the stores department, it is linked to the accounts department. It is linked to the human resource department. So it is an interconnection within the departments to be able to operate it because it gets the information that you put in and uses that information to give you a holistic, uh, holistic uh, report. In addition to that, a management information system is a people-oriented system. Having it in place does not mean that you are going to remove your staff from your businesses because it needs people to manage this system. So the best you can do with it is, how do you incorporate your human resource into this system such that they can work with the system together with all other participants in the business to make sure that it gives you holistic 
information. But also we must know that which is a paperless system. As uh, most business owners, we are used to paperwork. Everything we do is paperwork. Everything we do, we must file. But then when it comes to this system, you can make a deliberate decision to have paperless operations, which most times people call these days paperless trade. If you go somewhere, all you see is your laptop. You don't see any paper anywhere. You probably don't see any pen anywhere. Why? Because all your transactions are done on this gadget called the computer or the laptop. So it is paperless. The moment you install it, it means that you are going to minimize on the paper that you are going to use in your business, reducing on stationary costs. But also we must know that this system has become a need in the 21st century. If you are in the 21st century of today, and you are still resistant to this system. You have still not embraced technology in your business. That means that to some extent, your operations are hindered. So it is a system that everyone must think about. It is a system that everyone must embrace. It is a system that everyone must implement because it's one of the requirements that I believe every business today must have in their, in their businesses. Then when we get to the benefits of this system, what does it do? Why am I installing this system? And you, before I even get to the, the content, you can look at the diagrams here. This system will take you from a lot of paper into a laptop. Now this paper means that each time you document something, you're filing it. When you want to make a report, you have to get back to search, to search, to start looking for a paper that could probably have been misplaced, meaning that you may not have sufficient data to get the reports that you want or to make informed decisions for your company. But the moment you have this system, just by a click of a finger, a click of a button, you're able to access the information that you want on the laptop. You don't have to send any office person, go and look for this file, go and look for this report, and you don't have to look for a report that was made five years ago because it keeps all the data that you have put in. And you can easily access it depending on the nature of the system that you have put in place. So it takes you away from paperwork, from the paper, this kind of disorganization and the like that we normally used to enjoy in the 1980s. And it brings you to the 21st century. So what you see here is the 18th and 19th century, right into the 20th and 21st century. That is what we call business transformation, operational business transformation, which I believe that as SMEs, considering that, that we are the greatest patent percentage, Uganda being an agroeconomy, we should also advance in our operations. What else does it do? It helps us improve monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring and evaluation is key to progress. The reason most SMEs are not progressing is because they do not have the capacity to monitor. They do not have the capacity to evaluate their businesses. And even though they have the personnel, a lot of documentation is lost in between. A lot of human craftiness is lost in between. And you find that you cannot monitor and you cannot evaluate your business as adequately, as consistently as you would want to do it. So with this system and in monitoring and evaluation, it reduces, it even eliminates, eliminates the risks that throughout the human process. It controls the certain standards that it accepts. There are do's and don'ts of this system. In every department, with every employee, there are do's and there are don'ts. So that means that there are control measures 
that can help the owner of the business to reduce on all the risks that would otherwise have taken place and the great losses. It avoids certain things. It creates checks and balances. As well, it helps you to predict and it enables you to transfer. You don't have to take, uh, you waste your time moving because in a day on average, if we go by the old age way of doing business, you can find that an employee will waste over two hours moving from office to office, seeking and inquiring. But with this system, you minimize on the wastage of time. Then what do we consider? Because these are some of the things on how to build this system. You need to build a system based on knowledge. For most of the organizations, these are basic aspects. It depends on the industry in which you are, but ideally every enterprise, every enterprise must have a supply chain management system. You must receive goods, whether they are raw or they are processed. Most organizations receive goods, but you must have a system in place that enables you to receive these goods. These goods must be recorded. Why? Because they will lead you into production. Let's say that uh, all of us here are into production of whatever kind of uh, products that we do. You must produce what you have received. However, what you have received determines the quantity of what you produce. And what you produce determines the quantity of what is in stores. So when you look at uh, this third picture up here, that is stores. But you cannot have these stores and you cannot quantify or know what to quantify without knowing what you are producing. Then from stores, it must channel out into the markets. You part of that system must incorporate distribution and sales. What are you distributing? What is the salesperson taking out? If, if they have taken up five bags of uh, cement, say at 40,000 shillings, how much do you expect? What are they feeding into the Dorothy, Whatever they feed into the system, charge to accounts automatically. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. We had briefly lost your audio, but it's now okay. It is now okay. Yes. Sorry about that. So, what I was talking about is that from supply chain feeds into production, production feeds into stores, and stores feeds into sales and distribution. Sales and distribution feeds into accounts. And accounts, all these deal with people. So part of that system has what we call human resource management system. It must manage the people. It must know the people in the system. It must know the people who access the system. It must know how these people operate the system. Then secondly, we have the business partners. This system is able to record who are your business partners. Uh, sorry, I was using two gadgets. So I have to reshare. I think because of uh, network, it had to go off. So this system here has uh, what they call business partners. Every business works with a certain kind of people. These partners could be suppliers. These partners are, are people who receive uh, your product. These partners are people whom you work with. They could be bankers. They could be, Umeme well, is your partner. Uh, National Water is your partner. So these are people or these are institutions that are fed into the system. Why? Because every transaction that is monetary at the end of the day will be recorded under these partners. Whatever activity you do with the partners 
is recorded. So that is where the system, uh, this gives you a holistic, a holistic system. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can hear you, Dorothy. Please continue. Oh, okay. Sorry, this uh, has been disturbing me a bit. So after knowing all that, because we have now got an understanding of how this system operates, the next thing we have to do is to know how do we install a management information system as enterprises? And the question here is, can you see the slide? No, we can't see the slide. Uh, sorry about that. Let me, I think the Zoom. Let me hotspot. Let me just hotspot such that uh, it does not uh, disorganize us. So here we get to, sorry about that. After we have known how this system works and what is involved in this system, the next thing we need to ask ourselves is how does an, how does an individual, how does an enterprise, how does an organization install this system? First, that what is needed in this system if you begin the installation? you must collect requirements of the system that you intend to develop. What we need to know is that your operations in your enterprise are what determines the requirements. Someone will not just come up and say, I'm starting a system. Those requirements, how does the accounts department work? How does the human resource work? What activities are involved in this department? So those are the requirements that we need to be able to install this system from A to Z. If you're in production, from supply, what is the first production stage? What is the second production stage? It moves you from stage to stage. So those are the requirements that we are talking about that are fed into this system that the users of this system are going to use for their day-to-day activities. And one of those requirements, they are categorized into two. The first one is functional requirements. What are functional requirements? These are the functionalities of the system. And here I give an example. For instance, the system should allow the sales personnel to record the sales made per day. The system must enable the sales person to record what has been taken out on any given day. Those are the direct functionalities that in every department, every activity of the day must be recorded in this system. If it's for accounts, how much have we made today? Which are the companies or who are our partners that have given us this money today? It will record if you're in a supermarket, say you say to the Millennium Supermarket, gave us 100,000 shillings. When you are recording, you must record the details that have come from Millennium Supermarket. If you are in the supply section, you must know which supplier has supplied us today. What have they supplied us? What are the quantities that have been uh, supplied to us? There are checks and balances. There's sorting sale of the products. 
then you put aside and know this that has been uh, that we are going to use for processing is what is uh, good and this is the wasted product so the system depending on the information that you feed into the system at the initial stage determines what you are going to get as functionality requirements at the end of the day. But also it has the non-functional requirements. There are do's and don'ts of this system. These come in indirectly. They don't have to be direct. So the <clears throat> non-functional requirements will say there are certain things that are allowed in the system and there are those that are not allowed. For instance, if you're a salesperson, they'll tell you that once you put in information, you may not have the right to edit it after certain hours, implying that someone else higher than you is supposed to edit it. In this case, uh, if you have uh, a small or micro business, most times the owners of the businesses are the ones who normally have those editing rights. The reason some of these things are incorporated to the system is to minimize fraud, to minimize theft. And two, the system will not allow anything that does not tally. If the store's person says that I have in store 4,000 uh, items, out of those 4,000, I have taken out 500, meaning that the balance in the stores is 3,500. The salesperson must be able to take out the sales of 500. If you have not taken out 500, you must return and the system must record. The moment you, retu you return less, the moment you sell out and return less than what you expected, it will indicate red lights, lights. So it has checks and balances all over the whole process meaning that even the employee that uses this system must know how it works to make sure that they are not caught in activities of fraud. Secondly, this system automatically produces reports. If you want your report at the end of the week, it will give it to you. If you want your report at the end of the month, it will give it to you throughout the year depending on what you have fed, what you want the system to do to you, for you, it will give you the reports based on the information that all users have been feeding into the system. So you must define the reports that you want to be produced by the system, whereby at the end of a specific period, you just go to that section, print out your reports, and then you'll have everything ready how every, every department has been operating, how uh, if you've made any losses, in which area have the losses been identified to be able to help you make proper decision making, resulting into informed decisions that can help you grow the business. You realize that uh, most of the businesses today fail to make informed decisions. Why? Because they don't have correct data. They don't have the correct information. They are working on assumptions. They are trusting people who also don't have that information. They probably do not record adequately or they miss out information in certain areas. So this system here enables, eliminates all loopholes and gives you exactly what you need. Then secondly, if you're installing the system, you must define the scope of your system. You must define the depth to which you want your system to be fed. Because there are people who say, no, I just want something simple, accounts, incomes, and expenditures. Someone will say, I don't want partners in it. Another person will say, no, just give me A, B, C, D. Then there's someone who say, I want everything to the detail. So you must define the scope of your business. In addition to that, you must know, do you want it to feed into all departments or you want it to only feed into particular departments? You can say, maybe I only want it in supply, production, sales and distribution. And I don't want human resource. I do not want uh, something else. So you also must be able 
to define what is the scope of your system? What do you want it? What areas do you want to focus on? Or do you want to focus on the entire organization? Another thing, if you are starting this system, is that you must involve all intended units, all intended users across the board, across the organization. Why? Because this system that you're developing is for the people. You cannot develop it independent of the people. Why? They are people that do not embrace technology. They are people that are resistant to technology. So one of the ways to bring them on board is to make sure that from the beginning to the end of the system, every department is responsible to contribute towards that information that you need to feed into the system, such that at the end of the day, they have that sense of ownership. And once you have a sense of ownership, you reduce on the risks when it comes to using this system. Another thing, you have to make the right choice of the technologies to be used. Like we have said, that this system is purely about the digital era. This system is about technology. So you have to have the ability to make sure that you identify the right technologies that you need. This system can also be web-based. If you are a business person who wants to go and have your website, it can incorporate all that, that within this system, there people can also access your website. People can make orders through the website. So it is a holistic system, depending on what your choice is for it. But also at the end of the day, it is attached to finance. So whatever you decide, there is a cost implication to it. Then number six is that you have to ensure that all functions of the system are properly tested. They must go through a testing process to make sure that one, all are functioning properly, all the information that you want in the institution has been made provision for. You must make sure that all departments are interlinked. One feeds into the other. That when stores comes back and feeds in their information, automatically by a click of a button, accounts has already received that information. So like most programs that are worked on, this system has to be properly tested at the end of the day. And you have to make sure you cannot have a system that is new and the users are not trained. So I urge everyone who intends to have this system in place, you must be a period of training for the users on how to use this system. Like I have said, this system has checks and balances. Whilst the user is not adequately trained to use this system, it means that they are going to input wrong information. They may not have the editing rights. And that means that the person who has the editing rights will always have to be editing, will always have to be making changes. So you must make sure that they are trained and you must ensure that a complete system documentation has been provided. Anybody who installs the system for you must give you what they call an architectural document, an architectural plan or an architectural design document. Why? This is the heart of the system. Without this document, if you have the system, and you want to upgrade, you cannot upgrade without that architectural plan. On the assumption that whoever has installed the system, God forbid, has been called by, by God. What happens? And you didn't have this plan. You must get a different uh, specialist to come and upgrade your system. If you don't have that architectural plan, you are most likely going to again start from scratch, or it will take a lot of time, which will breed again, further expenses, because they have to dig into the system and know exactly what was done. Those are backdoor activities. So never get a system in place up and running without the complete system documentation. That is what we call 
the heart of the system. It may be documented, but it is the guide that enables any technical person to know where to start from in case, in case of any challenges or if you must change the provider. You must ensure that the system you intend to use does not conflict with the law. One of the partners that you have in this system is URA. If you're a business that pays taxes, do not use this system to cheat. Like we have said, this system stores. If you are a came and you use a system and they say they want to use your system, they will be able to reach you. So whatever you use with this system, you must make sure it's clean and clear. Then ensure that you have the skilled personnel that takes us back to the training that I have talked about. Ensure that you have the skilled personnel. But also, most times people want to use highly knowledgeable people for this system. You want an accountant who knows everything. They are employees who have learned on job. This is an opportunity for you to train them. Train them to know the system, train them to understand the system instead of exiting them and bringing in a more skilled person. So, and last but not least, we have talked about uh, installing this system from the perspective of uh, entrepreneurs, from the perspective of uh, managing directors, from the perspective of all users. But we also must know that as an entrepreneur, as a business person, you may not be able to install this system yourself. Despite the fact that 90% is your input towards developing this system. However, you must get a skilled programmer to develop for you an error-free system. So you, may, you, you will not do it yourself. You cannot do it yourself. But what you need is a skilled programmer to make sure that they give you an error-free system. An error-free system is something done by someone who has the knowledge, someone who knows that from the beginning, the beginning determines the end. You cannot borrow a system. You cannot say, I am buying someone's system. Why? Because this is an on-ground system. Someone must come to your enterprise. Someone must know how your business operates. And that is what they use. But that requires skill. That requires knowledge as a programmer to be able to give a client what they need and what is error free. Having said that, uh, I'm thankful for everyone that has been able to listen in. And with this few uh, words, I want to welcome all of you to the world of technology in your business. We live in the 21st century. Everyone is trying to go tech. If we look at what is on social media, if we look at how people are managing their businesses, it is time for us as MSMEs to also embrace this development in our businesses, such that we can also stay abreast with the world. And just like Tim O'Reilly said, every industry and every organization will have to transform itself in the next few years. But for us, let's not talk about few years. Let us talk about today. Let us talk about this year, because we need it being the backbone of this agro-economy. What is coming at us is bigger than the original internet. And you need to understand it. Get it on board. Get on board with it and figure out how to transform your businesses. It is time to embrace this technology. It is time to transform our businesses. It is time now to think about the macro that will take us ahead in our, in our businesses such that when the world is talking about businesses that are growing, the MSME is also part of those businesses that are growing. Once again, thank you for listening in. Uh, my names for those that were not present are Dorothy Wegoye Chimoli 
and those are my numbers. I do not just speak of what I know, I have implemented, it is working from, for me, and I am benefiting from it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dorothy. Um, systems are very important uh, for your business. Uh, at the moment, uh, Enterprise Uganda is offering business free health check. Here we come to your business and give you a complimentary SWOT analysis of your business. And one of the key elements we look out for are your systems and which one should be, and we advise on what should be done there. Uh, there is a question from Mili Katana. Uh, you can, you can raise your hand or you can always post in chat a question or a comment. Uh, Mili, please go ahead. Uh, Mili. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Uh, uh, for small businesses, can you give us some solution? Can you hear me? I haven't heard how Mr. well. Uh, Mili, we cannot hear you properly. Maybe you can type in chat. It seems your network has a problem. What um, give us a solution for small business? Okay, Mili, please type in chat. Let me just go through the comments. There's a comment from Rebecca Kawahuma. Thank you, for Dorothy, for the presentation. Just to add on, uh, most system developers forget to add budgetary modules and reporting of budget performance, which is done manually, which shouldn't be the case. Yeah, indeed. Robert Berosage, I'm passionate about automating systems. Uh, we have posted the link for business health check we're talking about. Uh, uh, let me actually post that in chat right now, so you can always sign in. Then there is a, a comment from, Do from Paul. Uh, Dorothy, thanks very much. But talking about error-free system, is that actually realistic? I thought a system like any other thing is supposed to be a living system which develops and changes continuously. Uh, Dorothy, I, do you want to take that one? Yes. Uh, when we talk about error free, like uh, I said in the end, that the reason we have this uh, architectural plan, the documentation, is because systems can be upgraded. And with every upgrade comes changes. When we talk about uh, error free, it may not be 100% error free, but it minimizes, it minimizes on the errors because there is one thing to put a system in place and every now and then you are putting it under what scrutiny is not working for you, but you can minimize on the errors and experience, skill helps us to minimize it may not be 100% error-free, but the errors in the system are limited to levels that are not so inconveniencing. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that is actually true. You cannot put in, um, you, it's very hard to do a, an error-free system, but you should limit. You should try to limit the errors that are there. And one way to, to limit errors is to always test it. There are certain people called system testers who can help with this. Uh, Joshua, I see your hand up. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks, uh, Abid, and thanks, Dorothy, for the uh, great presentation. Uh, I think what uh, our colleagues need to understand, we have, uh, we have uh, off-the-shelf systems, the ones you just go and buy that are already developed. But uh, most importantly, for small businesses, it would be better you have an in-house built system. Like Dorothy explained, uh, yes, to have an error-free system, you must uh, get a specialist who understands programming to develop for you a system. Uh, Kawahuma mentioned something to do with the budgetary inclusion. Uh, it depends also on how you give a developer information that you want for your system. Because uh, personally, me as a developer, I will do for you what you ask me to do. I will not do for you what you have not asked me to do. But I can advise you 
on what is the best practice for uh, the most efficient system. So probably uh, maybe what we could put into consideration is how we give our requirements. It is very key and important for uh, a good system. Thank you. All right, thank you, Joshua. Adding on to that, it's uh, very important before you start a system for your business, you first understand how your business operates. A lot of organizations going into getting systems and they use a lot of money and take up a lot of time and these systems don't work very well for them because they do not really understand their business first. So when you first understand your business, what is needed and required so that you can tell your programmer what to give you or you can look for a system that fits those needs. Uh, Dorothy, anything to add here? I think you have said it all because uh, the, the strength of a system is dependent on the information that the user has. Okay. Uh, there's a question from uh, Winnie Nabukera. Uh, thank you so much, Madam Dorothy. How do you put systems in a small business? Now, every business, like I have said, whether small or micro, requires this system. There are systems, like I talked about, for this system to run, even in a small business, you can have your system. Even when you have only three people, you can have your system. These three people can operate more than one unit. But what is important is that you must feed your daily operations, the activities into the system. If you're into sales, when you go into production, that is information that the system requires. When you get into the stores, no matter how small your business is, you must have a store somewhere. It is important that you have that digital store, which is your system. So no matter how small or big or medium your business is, it would be good for you to have this system such that you can also incorporate in yourself that daily practice of feeding this information such that it helps you track your business progress. You can have more than one user in the system if you're few, because I know most micro industries or businesses employ not more than five people, and yet you have very many areas. So you can still have this system in place, but also like I have said, it depends on internet. There are those that can afford internet throughout the year. There the are those that may not afford internet throughout the year and maybe just use bundle or Wi-Fi. Still, this system can work. It can work online. It can work offline. Offline, it works when you're in office. Everything must be happen in the office environment. Offline, it can work wherever you are. So it is a flexible system depending on your affordability of the system and what you can handle. Thank you very much. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, there's a question uh, from, again, Robert says he has uh, registered for the BHCs and he has never gotten feedback. Uh, currently we are doing the BHCs in Kampala and Greater Kampala means Kampala, Mukono, um, Tinda, Nigeria, Kira, and surrounding areas of Kampala. So, but if you are within Kampala, you can send me a message, but you can still register, which I'll get up country. Uh, we are planning for that. Uh, in case you have an issue still, you have an issue, Robert, you can let me know. Uh, there's, an, there's a question again from uh, Robert. Is there any open source business systems that one can customize? Uh, Dorothy, do you have any suggestions there? Definitely, uh, that, is, uh, that is possible. This system is tailor-made. It is not a general, what I'm talking about are not those that people buy off the shelf. I am talking mm -hmm. about tailor-made systems. Okay. Um, then Katana is saying, can you give us a solution that is not web-based for small businesses? Can you use SMS? Uh, definitely, like I said, that this system can work online, it can work offline. However, in terms of uh, SMS, 
how do you feed the information? How do you access it? Because uh, what I've said that if you have a system that is offline, everything has to be within the office area using your gadget. If your gadget is, is a phone, that means that you can access, you can share whatever you want to share through an SMS because you do not require internet to transact with SMS. But to be able to do SMS, you need to use your gadget, the phone as a gadget for this business or connect your phone to the laptop to be able to operate on SMS. But anything that is uh, web-based, you will require internet. Okay. So yeah, like Adrethia said, if it's not web, if it's uh, web based, it requires internet. If it is not web based, that means you can only access it when you're in office. Uh, there are certain systems that can use SMS. Those are there, but again, it will depend also on the costs that you have. Um, Catherine says, at what level does a, a business get a system? I think somebody actually answered this in chat a little bit. They're like. As, as soon as you're starting a business, you need to start records because your records are the basis of the systems that you're going to build. So it's never too early to get a system for your business. You can start recording everything in a computer. That is much better. And the easiest thing you can start with usually is Excel. This is mentioned later on. Uh, Dorothy, anything to add there? No, I think you've said it all. Thank you. Yeah. So you can start with Excel in the beginning because when you when you eventually say, I'm going to build a custom system for my business, the programmer will ask you what you need. If you do not know what you need, you'll have a system that doesn't work. So start now. And when you have more complexity, when you have more people who need to share information, the same pieces of information, then you know you need a system. If different parts to refer to the same information, that means information has to be shared. You need to have a system that works. There's a question from Ochen. Hello, Dorothy, thanks for the information. And Enterprise Uganda, thank you for the opportunity to have such a great person in technology. Please advise me, Dorothy, please advise on how I can develop a technology information system that can run my company without a lot of paperwork. We deal in roasted coffee beans and powder. We also do barista training and another coffee assessor's product sales. How possible to get a system that runs this system, that runs this system, my company, a cost effective means? And if possible, how much can a budget friendly system for our small business, business services above we provide? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the system already we are talking about enables you to operate paperless. Anybody who puts in place a management installation system, sorry, management information system is already going towards paperless operations. So having that system in place in your coffee business is already eliminating paper work. Then secondly, how much does it cost? Uh, we are in partnership with uh, Enterprise Uganda, and I believe that uh, Enterprise Uganda will give you further information in regard to the cost implications of uh, this system. But what I can say is that the cost factor is dependent on the depth of the system that you want. There is no standard fee that for you to have this, this is the standard fee because there are so many requirements. There's understanding the nature of business that you're doing. There's understanding the operations. How are your daily operations? What are the requirements? What do you want? Like I had said, there are some people who may not want all the units merged in the system. And there are those who say, I want my entire organization. So there is no specific price attached to this, but rather it is dependent on what a client wants to be done for them. However, those further details uh, can be got uh, by uh, through Enterprise Uganda, who are spearheading this whole program. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, just to add on to that, the system you get will vary. And I think there are people here in, uh, participating. 
who are actually people from this area, from this field. I think Joshua seems to be one of them from there he was talking. Uh, so maybe in case you have used, in case you're using a system in your business, you can please mention it in chat. You can just mention which system you're using in chat. Joshua, please go ahead. Uh, thanks, Abid. I think uh, what our colleagues need to understand is, like uh, Dorothy mentioned, there's no specific value attached to a system. It only depends on the modules. Uh, modules are what, what, what level of business are you at? Uh, because you might find a business is just a, a one-person business who manages almost everything, and they just want to take records of uh, maybe their input, uh, maybe the processing level and output. So they have three modules, what comes in, what is done when it has come in, and what goes out, uh, which basically Excel can do for you. But when you grow bigger and you find you have uh, several departments, you definitely need uh, a more sophisticated system that is beyond just Excel, whereby you can be able to track each department and their operations at a given time uh, with, uh, uh, without using a lot of paper. But on just a one click, uh, I saw somebody asked, can I use this system on my phone? Yes, on your smartphone, you can. So wherever you will be, for as long as your system is web-based, uh, wherever you are and you have internet, you'll definitely be able to see what your company is doing at uh, any time, at any level. Uh, but if it is still a small uh, starting company with just a few uh, departments, maybe one or two or even three, uh, Excel, Excel can do for you, just record your records and be able to do for you that analysis. But if you want it more sophisticated, you can as well have a system that does that analysis automatically so that you don't have to go through the hassle uh, of you doing it all the time because these systems can be, can be automated or they can be that smart to do for you what you want for as long as you explain very well what you need to the person who is going to develop for you the system. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Joshua. Um, but being a bit non-committed about the type of systems, because there are very many systems that are out there. There are Ugandan companies that have systems, and there are also international companies that are providing systems. So we can get as Enterprise Uganda, but also in chat, people are putting in the systems that they're using. If you have a system that is working for your company, please post it in chat. Uh, Chigwe Godfrey, please go ahead. Yes, am I am I through? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Abid, for the opportunity, and thank you, Dorothy, for that educative presentation. Um, just uh, going back to one of the characteristics of an MIS, one of them was that uh, it uh, uh, it is paperless. Uh, does it mean that uh, paper is completely done away with? or it just reduces on the clutter of paper. Ah, okay. Uh, Dorothy, you want to check that one? Uh, it is possible that within a business, you can do away with paper. Anything to do with uh, in along the production line, you can do away with paper. It does not mean that your office will not have paper or you won't out, have to pull out a paper once in a while because uh, on the assumption that you have to do some print works and all that, it, mean, it drastically minimizes on the amount of paper that you would otherwise use on a daily basis or weekly basis. Where your office would be using four reams of paper per week, you will find that you only use half a ream of paper per week. Why? Because you have to send uh, certain communications because in a... Uh, our third world or in Uganda, you find that some people still need to see things physically. If you're writing a letter, you have to deliver it physically. We are still step by step going into the digital era. 
So I will not say that the system will eliminate paper 100%, but it will drastically minimize the amount of paper that you would use. And in, in lines, say like production, you don't need paper because within the system where you need to calculate, you use the system to calculate for you. Everything, all you have to do is input. Where input, do this input, measure input. So it wouldn't, I will not eliminate it 100%, but if you want to do it, it's possible. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Dorothy. Just add on to that. Yes, it doesn't eliminate paper. It reduces, and also for some people who want to get original documents, some systems allow you to scan the document, so you have a digital version of it, and then you don't actually need to keep that original document in some cases. So it reduces on the paper that you have, and there's also some systems that allow, for example, there's this simple, simple requisitions of below 50,000, below 100, instead of writing a piece of paper, there are certain systems that allow the person to request for this on their phone with a reason. The person receiving, who has the authority, receives that request and approves or denies it. So I find there is less paper used there. So there are certain things that can be automated slowly in your in your company. Uh, Joshua was asking. Sorry, Robert was asking. Is it possible to? Um, to merge WhatsApp into business systems and how to improve marketing prospects. I have not yet seen one, but I'm sure the systems that are doing this. Dorothy? I believe like what we said earlier, mm. whatever you feed the programmer with determines yeah. what they will do for you. Yeah. And also what they will do for you determines your affordability. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Joseph Kayongo, which I feel we have answered. The cost will depend on what you need the business to do. Uh, Bernard advises businesses start where they are, then upgrade slowly by slowly. You can start with Excel and upgrade to more tools. Yes. Uh, Christine asks, are there any prototype MS, MIS systems one could adopt? Uh, you can get in touch uh, with Enterprise and we can let you know. But also you can look in chat. People, please do to post about any systems that you are using properly. Um, Bernard, yes, says Excel is a starting point. Uh, Wanume Kenneth is asking about the cost. And can the, okay, can the system be operated on smartphones? Uh, yes, this has been answered. So basing on what you want, then you can get that system. If you want a system that is operating on smartphones, you can get such a system. Bernard goes ahead to mention, remember to build a data culture in your organization. Then you want to be reactive in user systems. This is very important. You need to start asking people for records in your company before you can build a system. Because you build a system when people don't have a culture of keeping data, they will not use this system. You will waste money. So if somebody is going out to the field and they're giving you verbal records and you give them a system, they will not see the use for using it, the need for using it because you have not asked them to do this. So ask people for records. You need to start building this data culture even before you have the system. Um, Okay, uh, Joseph, okay, I'll get back to you. Uh, Charles says, thank you, Dorothy, you know, this power. Bernard says the data storage is very important. Uh, Audrey is using QuickBooks in her business. Yes, this is one of the common uh, accounting systems that are used, but they also can be used for everything else. Uh, the query on open source, I think was answered earlier. Mildred is using something called Source. It is a uh, mobile and web-based, which helps in request, exos, request, expense, and income management. Uh, I think the contacts are there. Bernard uses custom build systems. So Bernard builds his own systems. That is very good. Ah, there's a question from Ivan Kalema. How safe is the data for online systems? 
I mean, all that data is locally stored, not on the cloud. Dorothy, uh, can you check that? Yeah. This data here is uh, very safe. Reason being that oh, every yeah. user, Thank you. Thank you. every uh, user yeah. has a password. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Nice holiday. Nobody mm -hmm. can access no, the information that no, has no, been fed no. into the system other than those that are authorized to use the system. In case of NFO compromise, the system also indicates where changes have been made and who has made those changes. So whatever you do with the system, whatever edits take place on the system, the date and the time are all recorded. In addition to that, uh, there is always one person that is authorized to go to the system to make changes after a period of time. So nobody accesses the system, nobody other than the users, and not every user after a period of time can access the system. There's always maybe the CEO, the MD for small businesses, that if there's any change that must be made, they must go to that person. So there are checks and balances along the way that do not compromise. All the information you put in is stored. It is not lost. Thank you very much. Okay. So adding to that, um, so it is very important to map your authorizations in the company locally, so that if it says the MD has to sign up on this, also your system should have that. So that nothing happens if that has not been put there. If it says the MD and the um, uh, finance officer, or if it's a finance officer and stores, that should also be mapped onto the system. Then also you can set your system such that it has both local storage and cloud storage, such that in case one is corrupted, one is available. Certain people lose out on data because their assist, all their data is stored in one place. So if it is stored on a computer in your office and there's a power outage or something happens and that computer gets messed, your information gets lost. So you should always have a data backup system in the company. So Bernard says there's a WhatsApp business API designed specifically for linking systems to WhatsApp. Christian says, Bernard, you are so technical. Uh, Muonge, do you have do you have a simple existing system for primary schools? Yes, we have seen systems for primary schools. These are there for schools, secondary schools, all of them. Uh, Yusuf, uh, okay, Yusuf supplies something called ERP Next, and they provide a system which if you'd like to move beyond accounting to include streamlining processes and workflow, this could help for them. They start their packages from as low as 50,000. Uh, okay, so he has put his, his email address. You can contact him. Maybe if you can also add your phone number. Uh, okay, uh, we have a challenge from Robert says agro processing. Input sector is too naive and you're not smart tech. Actually, one of the industries that is moving very fast into systems is the agro-processing industries. There are a lot of systems that are on phone and computers that are meant to deal with the needs, the agro-processing industries. Christina says, thank you so much. Uh, Yusuf says, sometimes cloud storage is safer because clients have been robbed or is flooded. So on-site storage has its Limitations. Uh, Godfrey asked, is the marketing component incorporated in the distribution and sales component or can it be a separate component? Uh, Dorothy? Uh, this can be a separate component, but this can also be incorporated. It depends on the, the design plan of the system. Okay. So yes, any component that you want, can be incorporated and can also be designed according to how you want it. So it's up to you really. When you're, when you're having this system designed, you can actually talk about what, what you want. So there's, 
it shouldn't be that whatever system you find somewhere else is what you want to come and do also in your company. It can be different because your company is different from other companies. Please do not copy and paste from some other companies. You have different cultures in your company. You have different systems. You have different processes. Even the most common ones like QuickBooks and Tally, this can be customized to you. I think all the ones that have been posted here, like ERP Next or Source, or which other one was there, all this can be cost, uh, can be customized. Um, okay, so we still have the business health checks that are going on. In case you have had issues, there's that link over there. But let me also post my email address. You can send me an. You can send me an email address in case you're having issues with the, the link. I posted it there in chat. I will connect you to the business health check so you can get the complementary system. We are also having something called the Entrepreneurship World Cup that is happening. That is happening. Uh, this, this is ongoing until 5th September. Please apply. It's a global competition where the winner of the business, where the winner of the competition stands to win 500,000 US dollars alone for the winner. However, when you apply, you also get access to a few systems and a few tools. And when you complete your application, that's even much more. Um, I'll ask my colleague from Enterprise Ghana to post that link in here in chat as we take uh, a comment from Mawa Zakaria. Mawa, please go ahead. Yes, yeah, I, I like this, pro, this session today. Um, it has made me to reflect on the, my business. I set a new business for, I, re, I, re, I scale my ICT business into town, nearby town here from the refugee camp, it's Koboko district. Uh, it has taken almost uh, three months Honestly speaking, I don't get customers. And the, the main purpose of the business is to carry some trainings for ICT. And then uh, and I found myself all the time I'm, I'm using my salary to pay the rent. Uh, and then as the whatever from this session, I want to see how best you can advise me. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> That's a bit outside the scope of this particular session. Dorothy, do you want to advise? I think uh, what uh, I can say here is that let him get in touch with Enterprise Uganda outside this session and further guidance will be issued. Okay. Uh, Zawa, there is my email in chat. Maybe you can get in touch. Uh, you can also register for the business health check. Uh, which is there, we can give you some advice. I've been, as in Kobok, I think last year or the other year. So maybe a little bit of why you're not getting customers is that you are not talking to them in the right way. What you could do is you can go and do a bit of a survey and find out what are the needs of the clients, what are the needs of the different people in the area, such that you come up with packages that they are interested in that are responding to their needs, especially their training needs. Because if you are training about uh, designing websites, yet people are looking for how do I use a simple Excel document to keep records in my business, you will not get customers. So you need to get reach out to people in the area, go do a survey, talk to people and find out what are their needs. And then you can maybe talk about you can communicate very well and come up with packages that they need. Uh, source says that their cheapest package is 32 per month. Uh, people, please do post. Uh, Fida says she has tried opening the link but has failed several times. Fida, please do get in touch with me. Um, which link are you talking about, Fida? Maybe you can let us know. Okay, uh, we can wrap up this session. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Yes, uh, so uh, Dorothy, there's a question. Does 
DNM have a website? And also, does DNM Group International, do you do MIS trainings? Do you offer MIS systems? Please talk about this. Uh, DNM Group International Limited is currently working on its website uh, through, again, this system that we are talking about. And in terms of trainings, like I say, together with uh, Enterprise Uganda, we have a team of uh, programmers, specialists in the IT section that are available, ready to train the users, to train organizations and institutions about the benefits of the system and also able to install the system, tailor-made systems for businesses. Thank you. Okay, Dorothy, please do post your contacts in chat, so that in case people want to get in touch with you, they can do so. Um, all right, we are about to wrap up in the next seven minutes. Uh, any other questions or comments? Um, I will just add a little bit about this particular topic. A, a bit of my background is in computer science and I went into business. So a number of mistakes that small businesses make is that they go and get systems before understanding what their business is, how your information flows in the company, what your systems are, how, what are your processes. So you need to first do that in your company before coming up with a system. Otherwise your systems will not work. So first set up processes internally. Look at this paper system, your paper trail. Start when you get somebody to come and give you a system, there's something to talk about. There's something to show them. Uh, Ahmed, do you want to say something? Uh, they have requested the whatever for course, for source. Um, I think Nebo. Okay. Uh, so systems are very important for your business and they are also very good. As you grow and your area comes for you, you have records to show them. And you can go back three, four, five years. Paper can get, paper can fade. There are these receipts that people are given and they will fade. So here it will be like, you have said this, you bring out the, the receipt, it has faded. If you have recorded this in your system and you have even taken a screenshot of it or you have a digital copy of it, even if that receipt fades, your digital system, your, ma your management information system will still have this information. So you find your assessment will be lower. It will help with your inventory, it will help with your management of everything. So systems are very important for your business and they are the bedrock of growth. Uh, Dorothy, maybe you can have the last word and then we close. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the last word I just want to have with uh, everyone that has participated, whatever category of business that you are in, whatever we have discussed is a necessity. It is a need in your business. It is not a choice especially if we want to move ahead. Uh, oftentimes I have uh, attended uh, workshops, I've attended conferences, and uh, one of the things they talk about is the resistance to grow. We want to grow, but then again, we resist that growth. And one of the reasons we resist that growth at uh, times is understandable, because the finances have a great role to play. But at the end of the day, we must also ask ourselves what will lead us to that journey. You can have a payment plan, but don't eliminate it until you get the right sum of money. Oftentimes, people have waited for large sums of money and delayed their progress in life. Do not delay your progress in life. 
Why? Because even those that install these systems are human beings. They understand challenges. For as long as everyone on the table is honest with each other and are committed to fulfilling their obligations, this is the system that will take SMEs to a different level. I have witnessed in most uh, conferences, people look at SMEs as really the end, the law. And even though they say that Uganda is an economy, so we are dealing with small businesses, but let's not allow ourselves to stay small. That even in the smallness of our businesses, let us think big. Let us go for the big thing. And let us commit to doing those things that we will think are big, yet after they are implemented, they will be small to us. And that's why we talk about upgrading. So I wish you all well in your businesses, and I say that part of wishing you well will be embracing these simple systems that will make us also have a fair voice on the tables of discussion. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are closing, and I'm seeing Ochen's hand up. Okay, Ochen, you be our last comment. Well, uh, just as a reminder, Enterprise Uganda is giving out complimentary free business health check for your company. We come look at your business and then give you a SWOT analysis and give you advice on how to improve it Hello. for free. Just register on the link. Yes, Ochen. Yes, I was just wondering, sorry to, to, to ask this question this late. I was just wondering if uh, a small scale uh, businesses like us uh, could do, could do uh, get those services on, um, uh, I would say, uh, higher parties. Would it be called higher parties? For example, the, the, the web, the, 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 the company, uh, the, 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 the information company give the service and then we pay in installment basis because some of these systems may be so, so relevant for us, but maybe the finances that they need may not be, we may not afford to pay at once, but the, to establish an agreement that can enable us to have maybe installment purchases so that we run the system as we pay uh, maybe on agreed period of uh, time. Is there that provision uh, in Dorothy's company or are there uh, members within our group who provide such services so that we can see whether some companies like ours here can uh, borrow that idea and implement it? Well, for Chariots Coffees and Barista Academy, we have, like I've said before, we have a lot of uh, paperwork because we do a lot of, we keep a lot of documentations. Since when we opened in 2018 up to today, we have that paperwork there. So it's really, you can imagine how bulky it is. So I would just imagine if somebody could offer that service and then we agree like in installment basis for, for my company or other companies. Is there a service provider who, could, who can provide such services in that particular information tech, uh, system area? Thank well, you. Jen, I wish you had asked earlier because I think some people have left and they were programmers. There's some people willing to yeah. do that, uh, yeah. but I can't. You can reach out to the companies that are posted in chat. Okay. Dorothy has put there her, her contact. There's a contact for mm -hmm. from Mebo of a company called Source. There's also a European Next who are putting their who have put their, their what? Mm -hmm. Their contact. So you can reach out to them and see what what right. you can negotiate with them. Uh, for everybody who wants to do a business health check, please do check out in look for that link. It is there in chat. It is the last one that has been posted by the Enterprise Uganda account. All right, thank you very much uh, and wish you the best. Uh, this recording will be available. Okay, uh, Rosa has registered. Um, this recording will be available for review uh, on the Enterprise Uganda website. Okay, thank you and have a good week and wish you the best in your businesses. Thank you. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.